Hey y'all, Craig, good news. You're probably not racist. Also, you're a racist. <laughs> let, let me explain. How did we even get into this? I, the whole world, okay, in its entirety, has got racism. Every color, creed, every description, every sexual bias. If you're a terrorist, well, obviously they're racist, but you get the idea. And you know this. I, people are people. It, it doesn't matter. Our insides are all squishy just the same. Our education is different, and our experiences are different. And I think that's a lot of what makes us us, right? But recently, you hear so much about racism. And, you know, it's one of those ugly things that comes around, usually around election cycles. And, you know, it begs to ask the questions on, well, how do we even define this? And why are we talking about it? Is it... Is it out of control? I don't know. I'm, you know, white guy. Um, evidently, I'm totally clueless because I'm a white guy. I don't have any of the experiences that any of the black people have or the brown people or any people because I'm a white guy, which is about the most racist damn thing you can possibly say. You know, <laughs> all of a sudden, white guys are everything bad and everything else is perfect with everyone. It, no, come on. We know this. But why is that the case? Why does it seem like it's all about making people mad? Because that's what happens when you start to call people racist. Now, I remember during the, uh, uh, the last election cycle, presidential election cycle, um, getting into some conversations on the internet with, with friends. And, uh, you know, people who were not conservatives. Uh, they were very liberal, uh, some very progressive. And, um, you know, sometimes it'd get a little heated, but we always try to kind of stick right down, you know, the rail of reality. Um, but then somebody would chime in somewhere and, and call me a racist. And immediately, you know, well, you can't know, and you're white privilege, blah, 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 blah. Like, what? I mean, how do you even respond to that? It, it, that's the idea. It's to shut you up. Eh, but at this point, there's a lot of us that are like, man, no, I'm not going to just shut up because th this is getting out of hand. So where does this come from? Well, certainly, you know, racism is a real thing. I mean, we've, we've probably, everybody's met somebody at some point and said, whoa, dude, I, that's, that that's racist and that's you know we usually kind of check people on that you know and it's not socially acceptable um in in my you know 56 years of life i've i've experienced sort of a weird arc you know as a country the united states has certainly been through a lot of different internal struggles um, and certainly the internal struggle having to do with, with slavery is, is a big one, you know. I mean, you know, we had civil war because of it. But, you know, obviously the civil war didn't, didn't solve it, and really slavery was not the key issue over that whole thing. But, you know, it became a, a core issue for Lincoln, the first Republican. Um, and, and it really... Slavery was not a popular concept in, in the North. I, it, the South, it was, it was just part of doing business. I mean, obviously it wasn't invented here. Slavery has been around, you know, from the time that, you know, one tribe beat another tribe and took over their village. Right? It's, it's an ancient, ancient, very unfortunate thing. But it must say something about human nature because it's been there for a long time. But... You know, commerce was huge in the South. It was, it was more so in the South than, than the North back in the times of, of our founding. And, you know, and slavery was just part of it. I mean, you know, certainly rice and cotton and stuff like that, very labor intensive. They didn't have machines. And this is just kind of the way it was done. It's unfortunate. But, I mean, that's part of our history.
part of the world's history, though. I mean, we like I said, we didn't invent it. Slaves were all over the place. Um, you know, there were. You can look into that. I mean, you can find out pretty easily who was pushing slaves all over the world. You know, there. It may surprise you actually, uh, but I don't even want to get into that. Just we're talking about racism, and, and it seems to stem from that. But racism doesn't mean black white. It, you know, it's, it's just race against race. I mean, you can be racist against whomever. And you can hear the thunder out there. It's storming today. Um, well, at at some point, as we got past our struggles of uh, you know, the, the the Civil War, we never really reconciled, I suppose. So by the time we get into the 60s, 1960s, um, things had really started to heat up, um, especially down here in the South where, you know, segregation was a real thing. I, blacks were here, whites were here, didn't show water fountains, bathrooms, stuff like that. Um, you know, I, I used to own a building that had three bathrooms and I had no idea <laughs> You know, uh, somebody asked me one day, hey, you know why there's three bathrooms? I said, well, I don't know. I, well, you know, men, women, blacks. It's like, wow. Yeah. Huh, it wasn't that long ago. That building was built back in the, the mid-40s, I think. Still standing, strong building. Um, so it's been around, you know. Um, there, were, there were groups of people uh, formed to try to to keep people oppressed. You know, the KKK uh, was was sort of a military arm of of the Dixiecrats. Uh, you know, Democrat Party back then was a little different, maybe, than it is today. But you know, it was the Party of the South, and you know, the, that was part of of would kept people down. I, people don't like that part of the history, but I mean, if we're going to look at all this, you have to be honest about it. It was, you know, it was a Democrat thing back then. Um, but it's not, that's not to say that that's what they are now. That's not to say what America is now. We've all evolved past that point. That's, that's what I'm trying to say. But when we got into the 60s, uh, of course, it, it heated back up again. And we, we had the time to explore things like this because we'd come past World War II, um, Korea was going on, uh, and then we got into the Vietnam War. But after World War II, um, a lot of the folks that grew up during the Depression that went through war came home and wanted just to settle things down. They had had enough disruption in their lives and they yearned for a very solid, very conservative society. Um, the kids rebelled against it, you know. So in the 50s, you know, you, you start to see it. But in the 60s, it was full on. Um, there were attitudes that were different. You know, mid-century, mid-1800s, um, Marxism became a thing. And it, it was... It caught the imagination of a lot of the scholarly types that, that like to, you know, become philo philosophers over politics and religion and all these things. And they thought that it was kind of a neat idea to have a society that wasn't bridled by uh, conformity, that it could just, you just be what you are, you know, and, and you don't have to conform to any structure, you know, that structure is, is what, what brings us down and you know we, we, we just need to be set free to realize our, our full potential which you know is, is kind of appealing but obviously without structure we're you know we kind of go nuts uh, <laughs> 2020 being a case in point but I'll get there anyway as we as we find ourselves in in the 60s and this old concept of Marxism has been kind of kicked around on and off and and, and people have tried it with, with mixing in some other concepts as well. It became communism, which is, you know, different than Marxism. Socialism in between. You've got all these different varieties and structures that, that people want to experiment with. Uh, and of course, here's the United States chugging along, you know, being a republic and being very successful at it. 
which was really annoying to a lot of the socialists and, and a lot of the, uh, the influential academia because, you know, this was too simple. It was, it was a stupid concept, right? Just put the power in the individual, let the individual do what they want. They have to follow the rules and the basic structure and the government promises to abide by its rules. Nah. What's so exciting about that? Except that, you know, it, it launched so much creativity and so much potential. It just draws people that, that want to do things. But never mind, these, these folks don't see it that way. So throughout the 60s, there was there was a lot of tension stirred up. Um, we had to do something about the race troubles and uh, how the the black people were being oppressed in the South, and and that change was forced and and that was a good thing. You know, it's a good thing that we finally had to sit down and say, hey, no, this we're not we're not following the rules here. This is a whole group of people who have been kept down, and and as a nation, we decided in the 60s that, yeah, you know, we, we can do better. And we set out to do it. So, you know, I was born in 63. Um, I don't remember a lot of the 60s because I was a little kid. You know, I remember bits and pieces, but I remember the 70s. And coming up in the 70s, you know, the Vietnam War just, you know, was tailing off and, and finished. And... Um, you know, we had the space program and uh, we, we had exciting things going on like that, but we also had, you know, the assassination of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. And then, you know, of, of Bobby, or Bobby Kennedy? I get the Kennedys all mixed up. But, you know, it's sort of a, a weird tit for tat-ish thing. Um, and, and then, of course, the assassination of, of JFK as the president. Um, you know, there was a lot of civil unrest back then, and it had a lot more to do than just the black folks being oppressed in the South. Um, it was also aggravated by these folks that just wanted to change things. They didn't like America for what it was, for whatever reason. Um, they felt that we were we were pushing our weight around too much, and, and we just, we, we didn't deserve you know, our, our place in the world. I, I don't understand it personally, but this, this concept has been pushed for a long time. So writers would write stories about how, you know, a world would be with, without this kind of structure and how liberating it could be. And philosophers would, you know, would, would, would opine on how wonderful, you know, it'd be to have people that could just be accepted for whatever they were. And these were all high ideals, wonderful, but um, it, you can't achieve these things uh, to a certain level, but I mean, you're always dealing with people. There's always going to be disappointment. There's always going to be something, and there's always going to be some element of racism or bigotry. Uh, there's just people are people. You know, we, we're all very complicated. You know, we act one way on the outside, and we feel a little bit differently on the inside. You know, that's social norms being, you know, what's expected. But we, we got through the, the 60s and the, the civil unrest. Um, but in the process, we, we sort of started a couple fires that never really died out. And this, this Marxism thing really never went away. Um, but there was also another element to it, anarchy. Um, you know, just no, no structure. Just, just go crazy. Um, you know, again, because America is inherently evil, um, because we've been so successful, and I, I don't, again, quite understand it, but that everything must be destroyed. None of these things make sense to most of us. It's not very appealing. But for some, for whatever reason, it's, it's, it's the most logical thing. And so it, it continues to be pursued. And what we, we, we find ourselves in this weird situation now. We have a very, very charged election coming up. Um, it really couldn't be more sort of like one side or the other. It, you know, it, so was, it was always sort of like a selection of like, you, know, you hold your nose and you, you pick. Um, but this is different. And leading up to it's been so different. It seems to be this whole emphasis to just try to find things that aggravate people. 
you know, um, since the beginning, you know, at first it was very much like, well, if you voted for Trump, you were deplorable. You remember that. And that's kind of when the gloves came off. Um, all of a sudden, you know, it's always been like, well, we've got a trouble with that politician. Not necessarily the people that vote for him, although, you know, we, we consider them to be less smart. But uh, this is the first time I remember that if you voted for somebody, you were categorized as I mean, just regardless of what you actually were, if you had been friends with these people in the past, it didn't matter. All of a sudden, wham, if you were v willing to vote for Trump, you are persona non grata and um, I'm unfriending you on Facebook and, you know, and you're, and you're horrible. Oh, and you're a racist because <laughs> that always comes up. Which is nuts. I mean, not, again, people just aren't really that way. I, are, are some, yeah, maybe they talk that way, but hey, people just deal with people. You always see it, you know. But I'm getting ahead of myself again. What I'm trying to get down to is that as we got towards this election, you're seeing all of these different elements start to stack up. All kinds of things to cause friction. To, to force that choice. Are you this or are you that? And, you know, I've spoken about it before. We're, we're gray. We're, we're not this or that. In most cases, we're a little of this, a little of that. We might project an image, but, you know, really on the inside, we're pretty malleable because, you know, we, most of us understand that, hey, you know, I might learn something new here. I'm not always right. Um, I mean, certainly... I think a lot of us have core beliefs. I certainly do. Um, but if, if somebody shows me I'm wrong with something, then I was wrong with something. I mean, that's, there's no shame in that, right? But when you start to question my core beliefs, then you've got to give me a really compelling argument. You know, well, why, why am I a racist if I'm a conservative? Say, like, well, you, you're, you're white. Okay, I was born white. Um, what else you got? As well, privilege. All right, well, I've been pretty fortunate. Um, but I have know a lot of fortunate people of every variety. Um, and some have made it, some haven't. I, you know, that doesn't seem to have a lot to do with it. Doesn't matter. There's, they're not looking to give you a convincing argument when you get to that level. It's all to shut you up, shut you down, stop arguing with them. They are right, you are wrong, even if they don't have an argument for you. Because right is anarchy, <laughs> no structure. You're wrong, I'm right, that, that settled, science is settled. And we've gotten there um, with almost everything now. So I think about, you know, the, the whole George Floyd incident, which I think universally, everybody was horrified. Ah, that cop just killed that guy. Now, you don't have to be black to get hassled by cops. Uh, I can tell you. Um, and of any race and any age, I mean, things like that can happen. Um, you know, is it the cops? I don't think so. I mean, most cops are pretty decent. You know, um, what a tough job that is. Is it the people interacting with the cops? You know, did they they not learn that when the cop says stop, <laughs> you know, you you have to. That's why they have guns. They 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 enforce laws, and that's the structure that that we live under, and we've all agreed we live under these laws. So if you don't obey a cop things start to get out of control. And cops are trained to not let things get out of control. Um, but not all cops have perfect control. We know of that, everybody knows that. But the thing that happened with George Floyd was just, was horrible. And you know, now we know more about George Floyd and all that, and you know, was he asking for that? No. Was he asking for trouble from the cops? Yeah, you bet. He had broken several laws, and he was not complying. But, you know, really, once you have a guy down, you got him in handcuffs, you got him. You know, 
call in the backups, but there are four of them there. I, I don't know. But the thing is, we, we're all horrified. But all of a sudden, this thing, it, you remember, it, it was like, well, police brutality. And in these centers, cities, we have this problem with police brutality. And, oh boy, we're going to have a protest. Well, okay. And, you know, we're all asking ourselves, well, don't you know that you elect all those people? You guys can change it yourselves by electing people that, you know, do better for you. But that never seemed to come up. But in like, boom, just like that, all of a sudden it's racism. What? Oh, yeah, well, it's a white cop and this black guy, so it's racist. It's like, well, there's nothing, there's nothing to even suggest that in that. I mean, he, the, the white cop worked in a predominantly black part of town. He was actually the minority there. And, you know, and actually, if you look at the other cops there, I mean, <laughs> you had kind of a, a it, it wasn't a racist thing. But all of a sudden, racism, again. And we're all, you know, we're all getting upset. And then people are protesting in the street, okay. And just like that, there's these lunatics just leapfrogging right over them practically, smashing windows and, and looting and causing all this stuff. And you're like, whoa, what happened? How did we get to that? Well, it's because, you know, all these cities are racist. <laughs> But they're predominantly black. They're run by, you know, black mayor, black sheriff, all this. It's like, how can that be racist? I don't know. No, it's, that's what it is, and it's your fault. And you white people should just sit in your houses and, and, and apologize. And I, that's how I feel. And did you notice that, you know, the, the people who were, like, smashing the glass and starting the, the trouble and the fires, they're all like these spindly white people, you know, they're a bunch of anarchists, you know, Antifa and, and Black Lives Matter, but you know, they're, they're, you're not black and you're burning down a black town here. I mean, these poor folks live there, they have probably legitimate troubles that they're out there protesting, you know, it's like maybe police brutality is an issue and I don't, I don't doubt it. But you just ruined everything for them. Um, they don't, you know, now you're trying to like, let's get rid of the cops. Let's defund the police. It's like, seriously? These people live central city in some of the roughest cities in the country. I, well, they are. They need cops. They need more cops. They need better cops. They need cops that are paid a little bit better. They need cops that, that aren't parts of a union that keeps bad cops. They, they, need, they need a sheriff's department that works for them just like it's supposed to be. They should demand it. As Americans, that's their right, and they get to go vote. They're voting for the wrong people, and that's what's causing their trouble. Not white guys, the wrong guys. But like I said, this whole thing has been about making people upset with each other. And so... You know, people thousands of miles away from some riot going on are, are fighting over it. You know, it doesn't make any sense. But this whole thing has been so effective. So when you look at it now and you consider racism and all the cries of racism, what is it really? I mean, is anyone trying to fix racism? I don't. I don't see anyone with big ideas other than you're racist and shut up. I mean, that's, that's kind of all I hear. No, it, it's not about fixing anything, is it? It's, it's about making people mad, making, dividing people, put you on this side and this side. Because most of us, when you see a city being destroyed, and especially if, if you're somebody that pays property taxes where you live, I, the mix of emotions is extreme because you're like, my God, I mean, the taxpayers must be losing their minds because what do you pay taxes for? Police protection, right? I mean, really, you know, police, fire. You, you hope you have a mayor that is, is going to make the right choices if there's some sort of disaster. You know, I mean, what else do we need these people for? 
I mean, we don't need them to tell us we're racist or social justice stuff or, or to tell us anything. I mean, people lose focus on this. You know, the government works for us. It's supposed to work for us. I mean, it seems more and more all we do is work to pay the government. Government. <laughs> A little dry. Why? Whose idea was that? Was it the idea of the people that want to make everyone angry? Are they trying to get us angry at each other so that we're not paying attention to them? So that we're not pointing at them and saying, hold it. These issues are yours. George Floyd died because that cop wasn't pulled off the force a long time ago, even though they knew he was a problem. They did. They should have yanked him. Why didn't they? Why aren't they held responsible? Well, because they're, they turned around and said, racist, <laughs> you know? It's a trick. We're not racist any more than anyone else in the world. I mean, if, if we are so racist, why does everyone in the world want to move to the United States of America? It's not to be in a racist country. It's to be in a country where, regardless of race, you can get somewhere. If you work hard and you're lucky, you can get somewhere. Believe me, the rest of the world, you can work hard and then die because it doesn't matter. You just have to work and hope that you survive. I mean, look at these poor folks in China. You know, they're getting wiped out by all kinds of natural disasters that you don't hear about. And their government doesn't care. It's not doing a thing for them. Everyone's, I, for 21 days, no one saw any of the leadership whatsoever. They, they haven't even shown up in any of these huge flood areas or where they're having the horrible droughts or any of this. They don't care. That's what communism really gets you, is a government that doesn't care. And when you look at some of these big cities where all these big problems are, where all those, those chants of racist are coming from, look who's running them. They're folks that act like a bunch of communists. I can do whatever I want. I'll blame you or blame you. Not me, but it is them. They're the ones that are supposed to be running the show. And the show they're running stinks. So, I don't know. Do you still feel like you're a racist? Because you probably didn't in the first place. But I think you already know why they're calling you one. They got nothing else to do. <laughs> they got nothing, right? They got, they don't have any great new idea. No, no concept of where to take us. They just want to tell us we're wrong. Do you even have to listen to those people? Probably not. Anyway, thanks again for listening. I really do appreciate it. Please hit subscribe, maybe even a like. I even appreciate that more. <laughs> Have a great day. Thanks.